Here with uh, Concordia Head Women's Soccer Coach Nick Smith to preview the 2023 season. And uh, as we record this, uh, first official game is, is not too far away, uh, a little over a week, uh, I guess. Uh, um, so it's uh, your, your first fall preseason uh, with this program. Uh, how would you kind of describe how the first week or so has gone in terms of uh, energy, enthusiasm, and just uh, intensity that, that you're seeing? Uh, encouraging. Um, we came in and uh, the girls did some work over the summer, that was clear. And uh, I think through each session, through each day that we've had so far, you can sit, tell that there's growth. Uh, we're learning again old habits with each other. Uh, and for the new players that are coming in, the assimilation's been really good. So we've had some, some newcomers who've really shown well. Uh, but also for the players that we had hoped would have a role, an important role for us this year, those those things are starting to look like they're clicking. So getting excited through the first week. Mm -hmm. You got a chance to to kind of figure some things out in the spring when you were here and, and went through uh, the, the whole spring season. But has that maybe allowed you to hit, hit the ground running this fall? Or, or uh, I'm sure there still are some new things that everybody's working through, but what's that process been like? Yeah, so in the spring it was really about assessing the group um, and sort of me figuring out what I think our strengths and our weaknesses are. Um, and I threw a lot at them uh, this spring. So we played in a bunch of different shapes in the scrimmages that we played and I think the girls were receptive to being, to trying new ideas. Um, and so that in tandem with me taking the summer to watch every game that they played this last fall on film, uh, gave me some ideas as to where I think our starting points were going to be as a team when we came back. Um, and so that allowed me to prepare, uh, I think, a little bit better than had I just come in in the, in the summer. Um, but then the other part of that, too, is that through the course of the spring, I got to see groups, um, smaller units within the field work together, and some things work really, really well. And the idea for me then as a coach is to try and figure out how I can put those into shapes on the field that make the most sense, but ultimately will lead to us being successful, whether on the defensive side or the attacking side. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, the, the roster is kind of a fairly youthful one. Uh, the group of sophomores now uh, played a, a whole lot as freshmen. Um, how do you feel like that, that kind of youth is progressing and maybe a lot of those in that class are, are taking on even bigger roles now? It was great, I think, that uh, a large number of the sophomores got had such a big role as freshmen. And, I think one of the things at the, the college level that you can't replicate in training is in-game experience. And so to be able to have four and five players who were freshmen last year that had large roles with this team, they come back and they're essentially juniors and seniors in terms of what their experience is compared to some squads. Uh, and so for that group, I'm excited because I get three falls with them. And that's a long time. But they also get three falls with each other. Uh, and learning each other, the habits of each other, the tendencies of each other. And I think the more that we can foster those relationships within that class, the, the stronger the team, the product is that we're putting out there on the field. Um, but in addition to that sophomore class, I do think both in the junior and senior class that we have this year, we have good leadership, good players that are going to be able to help mentor those sophomores through some tough times because there certainly will be tough times this fall. Uh, and so I think we have a really good mix. Uh, and I'm excited to see how, how the groups will really mesh together and, and become one. Uh, but we definitely will, will be having some younger players get some larger roles in big minutes this year. Mm -hmm. And then you also have someone like Grace Sankson, who's been a, a starter her entire career, decides to come back for that fifth season. Just how important is that? And what have you noticed maybe about her level right now in preseason? It's huge for us to be able to get Grace to come back. Um, I think her playing record speaks for itself. You know, three-time All-Conference player. Um, at the end of this year, I assume or she should uh, be the most appearances, have the most appearances in the program history. Uh, that's just immense. And also for the position that she plays. So she's a, a center back for us. She is essentially the, the the leader of the group. Everything is in front of her. She can just do a lot of commanding from that position and. I talked earlier about experience. There's not going to be anyone nearly um, that's going to have the same amount of experience within the squad that we have right now. So very fortunate to have her for this fall. Um, and I think what you see if you were to come out to our training sessions right now is that she is a player that certainly leads through example. Uh, and that is one that definitely gets the reaction from the other girls within the squad. Um, she is hungry to be successful. 
she's hungry to get herself out in the field. She's another one who clearly did some work over the summer. Um, and I, I think that just trickles down through the rest of the squad to have a player like that. Um, first of all, who willingly chose to come back and give us a, an additional portion of her life when she could have been on and she could have been done. Um, but we, we're, we're very blessed to have Grace with us and I think we're, we're certainly a stronger program for it. Well, uh, last year's team uh, went was undefeated in non-conference play. I think uh, once it got to conference, it was a little bit of a struggle to score goals, but uh, still able to manage a, a 500 record. Uh, how do you see things coming along in terms of, of being able to, to score goals when you need them, especially against some tough conference opponents? Um. I'm encouraged right now. So we're, we're just getting into our focus um, in our preseason about what the attacking play looks like. Uh, and just this morning actually was the first one where we had a full focus in it. And there are some things um, that I'm, I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing. Uh, in part, I think that's units rather than individuals attacking. And so watching film from the, the season that they had this past fall, um, I think the team was exceptional at breaking down opponents and getting into the space that was behind. Um, but where they, they lacked was once we got into those positions, there wasn't really support. There wasn't numbers that were driving forward. And so one of the, the ideas, one of the main themes that we have on the attacking side this year is just drilling into them that when we get the ball in those attacking spaces, I don't want us to worry about conceding goals. I want us to worry about scoring. So we have to be aggressive. We have to be taking the space. We have to be moving forward. Uh, and hopefully, um, when it comes to game time this season and we find ourselves in those positions, we're going to have numbers streaming forward into the box and getting ourselves into positions where we can score some goals. Um, and I also think that we've got a, a large group of players in this squad right now that are goal scorers, that if given the opportunity, they're going to find the back of the net. And typically, goal scoring comes with confidence, and so hopefully we can get on a roll early this year and that, that can carry us on through the GPEC uh, schedule when we get to that point. Uh, maybe you could uh, expand a little bit on, on some of those leading re returning goal scorers that are back. I think uh, people that watched this team saw the kind of talent and athleticism Kirsten Garner has and, and some of the others in her class. How do you see them kind of fitting into that equation? Yeah, so uh, the hope for Kirsten is that she goes on and betters what she did last year. Uh, she led the team last year with eight goals in the season. Um, I think a reasonable target for her is to be hitting double digits this year. I also think that on the goal creation side, she can do a little bit more. Um, she obviously has some unique characteristics as a player um, when compared to her peers. She's very, very athletic, very quick. So that allows her to really expand vertically and to, to hurt teams that way. But we have other players that can hurt teams in front of goal too, which are very different than what Kirsten brings. So you have um, Savannah Andrews, who is just a finisher. Doesn't matter right foot, left foot, if she's within 25 yards and she's got a lane, she can pop the ball and she's very, very uh, astute at putting the ball where it needs to be. She's a goal scorer. Um, I think Naya and Elena, both making runs forward from center mid positions this year, again, are very attacking minded. They read the game really well uh, and they get themselves in positions where they can score goals. But you also have players like KJ, Cassidy Johnson, Hannah Haas, who are pure strikers in the sense of striking the ball. I think KJ in particular in her build-up play is exceptional. I think she sees passes and she sees lanes for teammates that others don't. Um, but I think we've got eight or nine players on this team that are, are comfortable in the moment in front of the net. Sierra uh, Springer is another one who scored a couple goals for us in the spring and has looked sharp uh, coming back here for our preseason. Um, and Cameron Heiger is a freshman this year. Has, clearly demonstrated that she can put her foot through the ball and she can score some goals too. So, um, like I said, cautiously optimistic that, that there are goals in this team and that is definitely an area of focus that if we're building on, if we want to be more successful than we were last year, that's the area that we need to improve in. Well, a big sophomore class, pretty big junior class, not not a whole lot of seniors. You mentioned, uh, just mentioned a couple of them, Hannah Haas, Cassidy Johnson, also uh, Brady or what what might you be asking of them as, as seniors on this team? Steady, steady heads. Um, this is obviously a huge year transition. So this is my first competition year with them. And this is still a period where we're learning each other, where they're learning ultimately what the product I want to be building on the field, and my expectations of them. For seniors now, they've been through this years. So they, they've seen three falls, they've seen three levels of competition, three years of competition at the NAI and the GPAC level. They know what this is going to be about. 
And so that experience is crucial for us to really navigate the, the times and the, the voyage that we have in front of us. We're going to have some good moments. We're going to win some games this year. And we're also going to have some trying moments. Uh, and we are certainly going to face defeat at some point this year as well. Uh, and it's about navigating those and learning from, from the, the, the times that we should be learning and also then trying to replicate the good times that we have as well. Well, I, uh, in, in the spring, you, I think you talked about uh, trying out a lot of different shapes and kind of seeing what, what works best for, for this group. Uh, that, that process may still be ongoing in the fall, but are you, how, how are you feeling or getting a feel for, for what, what works best for this, this group? Yeah, so we, we talked about it actually in our first team meeting um, and reflecting on the summer uh, after we had the spring and, and going through all the games they had in the fall. I've got two general shapes that I think we're gonna run with as our primary shapes this year and then we have a tertiary um, third shape that we're gonna be comfortable in as well. Um, the shapes that we're, we're looking at lining up in are a little bit unique. Uh, there's not going to be many teams, I think, that'll line up the same way that we do this year. Um, and I think the, the shapes that we're, we're focusing on right now are built to allow the group that we have right now to really exceed, to, to maximize the advantages that we have within the team and to, to minimize the things that maybe we don't do, don't do so well. So I've got a pretty good mind as to what we'll see when we have our exhibition with Wayne State. Um, we'll probably run with two, two main shapes in that, in that game. Um, and based on what that experience looks like, I think that will directly identify how we line up against Kansas Wesleyan and moving forward. But as a coach, I think that's one of the, the best things about doing this. Is I don't believe that there's a specific way to play. I don't believe that there's a formation that's better than the others. The best part of being a coach is to figure out what shape meshes well and meshes the best with the group that you have. Uh, and so that is an ever-changing picture. Uh, you have injuries, you, you have fatigue that comes to the squad. And, New players will come in, other players will emerge at training and earn their spots, and that will require us to maybe chop and change a little bit in terms of what that shape is. You're saying you're not quite ready to tell your opponents exactly uh, what that what that is yet. That, that, that's your reading tea leaves, and that is 100% correct. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to keep things fresh this year. Like, like I said, I think having that variation is important. Um, to be able to throw uh, different looks, different shapes at, at your opponents, I think th there's a huge benefit in that. And so you can have you know, one shape that you run with at halftime, allow the other team to have their halftime talk and make all the adjustments for that shape, and then you come out in the second half with something different, and that just throws them for, for another loop. So we are going to be uh, an IQ, uh, a big thinking team. Uh, that's one of the asks that I had for the girls this last spring, and that, that's going to continue for my time here. Uh, and the more that you can do on, on the tactical side of the game, I think you just offer some variation, and variation is often good. Uh, this is not, not a soccer question, but you've had a chance to get acclimated in the, the Seward community with, you, with your family. How, how is the family enjoying life in, in Seward so far? We love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, when I, when I got home to Ohio after the interview and told Marcy that uh, we were looking at coming to Nebraska, she was just kind of like, Where's Nebraska? And still to this day, maybe struggles to point that out on a map, but um, we, we couldn't be happier here in Seward. Uh, we, we've moved, we're three minutes away from campus, which is fantastic. Um, and we, we happen to live across the street in Caddy Corner from a couple families that have kids that are similar ages to ours. Um, and my mother as well, so grandma for our kids, um, after living her entire life in Lucas County, once I moved the grandkids away, she decided she couldn't live without them, so she ended up accepting a job at University of Nebraska-Lincoln. So okay. she also moved to Lincoln, uh, and it's definitely nice to have that extra support here. Uh, but Seward is a, is a great town. Uh, we have felt welcomed, my family and I have felt extremely welcomed by everyone that we've met since we've been here. Uh, it's definitely a change of pace, uh, but in a good way. And um, where you, we can definitely see ourselves setting up shop here and definitely growing some roots and enjoying Seward for the years to come. Is there anything about Nebraska that surprised you so far? <laughs> um, the wind, uh, in particular the spring. Uh, I have never experienced constant gale force winds like we had every single day it seemed like this spring. Uh, I'm told that those return as well in the fall. Uh, it's just that it's hot and no wind here in the summer typically when we're not training. So. Um, wind for me is the least, my least favorite element when it comes to soccer. Uh, I'll play through rain, I'll play th through snow, and that stuff never bothered me. But wind, in particular directional wind, just changes the game so much that's been a bit of an adjustment. Um, but no, in, there's a, a lot of similarities um, 
from Ohio to Nebraska in terms of uh, definitely the weather, the climate, just the, the wind is the one thing. You're gonna have to factor that in for October and November. That's what I'm talking about. Games, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not thrilled about, but we'll make do. We'll, we'll do the best that we can through that. <laughs> um, last, what, what was the most fun thing you did this summer? I don't know if you went on a vacation or, uh, or you, I mean, you experienced Seward Fourth of July, right? <laughs> that was the one. So we were told even when I was interviewing that the Fourth of July here was something different. And you, you hear those stories and you think to yourself, yeah, okay, I'm sure. But it's really a thing here uh, to, to have the amount of people come through Seward that, that came through that Fourth of July. And actually where we live, we uh, were on one of the side staging streets for the, uh, the uh, big parade that runs through town. So my kids were at the windows watching all the animals and all of the old trucks and tractors roll through and that was uh, an amazing event. So we, it was uh, to see the pole vaulting downtown, they just had everything that was imaginable. If you've never experienced the 4th of July in Seward, you should come experience the 4th of July in Seward because there's nothing I've ever experienced that's like this. It was, it was tremendous. We had a great time.